Hey everyone, it is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Tuesday, August 13th, here with a midweek market recap video. We're going to cover all of the major markets and the current market environment. So we're going to dive into things here today. You can see we have lots of green across the board. Markets were higher today, up over 1%, really led by the NASDAQ 100 was up over 2% on the day. Uh, Five-day change numbers are back in positive territory now, and you can see we are starting to try and get back above the 10 period simple moving average in the SP 500 and the NASDAQ 100. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see a little more green skew here as well with semiconductors up 3.2%, followed by tech and staples to round out the top three. On the downside, we have financials, we have transports, we have industrials. Two of three of those are red. Uh, industrials here just up slightly over the past five days. For major markets, we saw a big push in crude to the upside. 6.42% over the past five days, followed by silver and natural gas. And on the downside, it was largely an unwind here in volatility. The VIX dropping almost 11% over the past five days, followed by the 10-year rates and the US dollar. So let us go to the charts now where we like to start off our analysis. This is the weekly time frame of the S&P 500. Each candle represents one week worth of trading. And we can see here, of course, it's only Tuesday, but we look at this week's candle and where it is forming right now. And you can see it has been uh, already with only two days worth of trading, a pretty good range here. We started the week off with some selling pressure to the downside. We immediately reversed it all basically all here on Tuesday. Uh, and now you can see we're back to essentially last week's close. And we did probe above uh, briefly above uh, last week's highs before pulling back. So um, when we look here at just how this is forming and what's going on here, most of the comments that we had on last Friday's video still apply here. We are trading in the same ranges, looking at the same levels, the same structure is in place. So really the 2955 area Area on the upside. That's still kind of my area where I would want to see the market back above. It's approximately the all-time highs in April. It's where we broke out in June uh, and then where we fell back down below the breakout level just two and a half weeks ago. So 29.55, I'd want to see this market back above there with the VIX, you know, falling back below 16. That would be the ideal situation. Get a couple of consecutive closes over 29.55 to help sort of stabilize and rebuild confidence in the bull case. Uh, that's what I'm looking for on the upside. On the downside, frankly, it's this week's lows now, 2872. And then below that would be last week's lows. And then 2800, those are the levels to the downside. Now, really, the takeaway last week was there's uh, likely to be chop that continues. You don't have to trade every day, right? Stay sidelined, stay patient. If you're in that sort of intermediate term basis where you're kind of waiting to see how the market's going to tip its hand here and whether or not this pullback gets any worse. And, you know, frankly, I still basically have the same comments, same thoughts process at this point is CHOP is likely to continue here. We've seen it, you know, exactly today, you know, go down to a daily chart of the S&P 500. You can see we started the week off down 1.22% yesterday. We're back up 1.5% today. Are we down another 1% tomorrow? That's sort of the hallmark of the choppy higher volatility range that we're sort of in right now. The stabilization is nice, right? The fact that we didn't follow through to yesterday's selling is constructive. The fact that this could be a higher low here from yesterday's lows and if we can push above last week's highs, get above 2940, that is, you know, near term, all constructive things for this market. Uh, we want to see stabilization. We want to see the market cool off, uh, the selling to subside, the high volume to sort of go away, the VIX to come out and unwind. Those are all of the things that would put this market in a more constructive sort of bucket. Um, but um, you know, we're, we're not there just yet, at least in the way that I look at markets. We're still kind of working through it. We've got some early mixed stages of stabilization here. But once again, I still personally would want to be a little bit patient here. Let's see if we can get some follow through above uh, last week's highs. Let's see if we can hold on to these gains into the end of the week. And let's, you know, importantly, let's see how this week's candle 
finishes out. Those are all the things that I'd be looking for. Otherwise, uh, more chop probably here to con- you know to stay uh, as of right now. The uh, S and P 500 is is definitely one of the more sort of kind of constructive looking indices at this point. Uh, If we go to the IWM, we still have, which again is nothing new of course, but we still have the underperformance here. We still have an IWM that is, you know, holding down at the lower end of this overall range versus, you know, kind of being back up here near these highs. It's still uh, kind of way down here after this high volume sort of um, sell off event that we saw just two weeks ago. So for me, there's still reason to be cautious here. Uh, again, it always is going to depend on your time frame. If you're day trading, if you're very short term, this is still the environment for you. You're having fun. You're seeing the ranges expand. Those are all good things. If you're a little bit longer term and if you're looking for that swing, basis still a little more difficult uh, in my eyes and a little bit easier to get chopped up so again patience uh, sort sort of pays off in in my opinion in this type of market and the Nasdaq 100 also uh, very similar to the S&P 500 here had this uh, fast snapback today it in fact closed above Friday's highs. So you can see we had the highs last week was 188.32 in the queues. We closed today at 188.39. So seven cents above last Friday's close or highs. Uh, that is constructive though. Those are the things that we want to see is we want to see the market stabilize and, and you know, continue to sort of grind higher and, and at least prevent the bleeding. So for me, you know, the queues here are definitely the bright spot. The Russell 2000 continues to remain uh, the sore spot in the market and we have really you know again just mixed signals out there if we take a look at the vix i believe we closed right around 18 today uh let's see 1810 so essentially we rallied 18 percent yesterday where we got a vix north of 20 again it was 21 where it closed on the session and then we just basically unwound that all and closed right back down to 18 uh and lost you know 14 percent on the vix today so again the chop is here we still have a slightly elevated vix could argue it's some type of bull flag here if you want to do some ta on the vix that's cool uh but for me again i think just looking at the raw levels uh you know 18 to 20 or so still a little bit higher uh and we'll see how that finishes out towards the end of the week now if we get into some other major markets here we'll go to tlt which saw again uh this this might give you the the pause or concern the fact that we did still see some strong rotation into tlt yesterday it was up two percent uh this is a big move for tlt it's already had uh two consecutive weeks of big moves it's had two consecutive months three consecutive months uh of big moves uh actually more like five uh and this is continuing here with heavy volume kind of pushing in and uh moving this higher you could call you know some people looking at this as some type of blow off or you know just a climactic move it's certainly possible but um you know while we're still seeing the strong move into tlt here momentum macd uh is at highs Again, that might give you a little bit of pause or hesitation uh, about uh, equity markets as a whole as well, especially if you think credit is kind of, you know, the the sharp money where, um, you know, it is positioned generally, uh, you know, correctly or quicker than than perhaps the equity market gets gets the note, so to speak. Um, it is something to at least pay attention to. Uh, but TLT, nosebleed levels, tough to chase it on the long side for sure. Uh, but trend momentum still sharply pointing higher here for TLT. And gold, uh, kind of the same thing yesterday, had a nice move again up 1% to the upside, gave about half of that back today, had a pretty good uh, amount of volume coming in today had a pretty good range a wick a tail that came all the way down sub 140 uh so interesting to see just kind of the higher volume kind of come in here once again very extended to the upside but trend and momentum very firmly in the bull case at this time now if we go to silver here silver very similar situation we saw lots of volume come in today we saw this very large range print with a wick all the way down to you know effectively kind of fill that gap below 1550 uh it gave up most of yesterday gains in fact all of it and then some uh so silver not as strong i mean it had a monster week last week uh uh, you know wednesday was up almost four percent on the day and then it basically just went sideways for the rest of the week uh it's kind of just cooling off here still holding up trend is up momentum's up um so again gold metals bonds all performing right now um 
in this type of environment. Now, if we go to USO, this hel also helps out certainly the bull case today, certainly the S&P 500 lifting the energy sector with a 4.5% move out of USO. Good volume coming in uh, and really just adding on to last week's kind of V-shaped move off of this 1050 level. You know, USO here has been pretty messy profile, all things considered. Uh, this has been a very fast move now in five days. It's had a 13% rally. So that's quite impressive, quite strong uh, and magnitude for, for that type of time frame in USO. Uh, it's back to some chop levels, back to where some overhead supply is right around this $12 area. So we'll see if that can put a lid on some of this uh, recent exuberance. But for now, uh, short term bull case is still uh, pointing higher here, although coming into uh, more supply. Last but not least, if we look at natural gas, natural gas starting to work itself back above the pivot here, the June below uh, June low pivot uh, back from the 20th, uh, back above, you know, $18.30. It's been chopping around here. Volumes kind of cooled off a little bit, but it's starting to grind higher here. Has that positive momentum divergence and looks like, you know, it could start to rotate back into that range. Have no position here. Natural gas still just spectating uh, on this trade. So, that is it. That is the, the, the midweek recap for this market. Still lots going on there. Lots of mixed signals, cross currents. So you really have to just kind of, uh, you know, know your time frame, know where you live, uh, double check the risk management plans that you have in place and, um, you know, take it sort of one day at a time. We'll see how this market closes out the week. We'll see if we can continue to firm up, hold on to these initial gains or at least today's gains uh, and uh, continue to, you know, um, stabilize here for uh, for the bull case. Now, that is it. That is what I have. So thanks as always for tuning in and watching. You can subscribe on our YouTube channel. You can follow us on the trade risk. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video update.